Hi guys, welcome to the fifth episode of the Blank Drawings podcast with me, Tunotenda Vincent Fashibe. I don't know whether I should actually do that introduction every every time because I'm pretty sure you know who it is by the time you start listening. But anyway, we move. So today we're going to be talking about the perennial war between generalists and specialists in design. Well, in the design industry to be more specific. Now, I'll start with letting you know about some personal experience that I have with this particular topic. Years back, uh, I was speaking to my then boss and I asked him, what do you think or who do you think would be more valuable to you in the company? It was just a random conversation. It wasn't even serious. Um, Between someone who's a generalist and someone who's a specialist. And there was a very interesting pause where I got the response, I don't know, (laughs) immediately afterwards. I bet you thought there was going to be some insight there, but there really wasn't. But anyway, above and beyond that, it's something that just kept coming up for me. It's something that I always wondered to myself, which would be more valuable to a company? But then above and beyond that, which would I prefer to be? Whether I'm a freelancer or I'm working in a company, would I prefer to be a generalist or would I want to be a specialist? So today we're going to be discussing the pros and cons. And just straight off the bat, I'd like to let it be known and let it be clear that I'm not saying that one is better than another, but it's just a matter of preference. And so let's get straight into it. Now with generalists, um, I'll give you an example of before I actually get into the pros and cons, I'll give you an example of what is a generalist and what is a specialist. So a generalist is something like a general physician, someone who can tell you the sort of direction in which things may go, what may potentially be wrong with your body at any given time, without necessarily giving you the specifics of what actually is wrong. Now, someone who's a cardiovascular surgeon, basically someone who deals with hearts and the, the the arteries that are connected to it and things of that nature, they can give you a more specific diagnosis of what is wrong with you. However, you can't really go to the cardiovascular surgeon unless you've been referred to by the general physician. People in the medical industry, let me know if I'm wrong. In, in any case, now we can go on to the pros and cons. Now, in terms of the pros when it comes to generalists, The first thing is that you have a wide net of work. You have a lot of things that you can do. So by definition, you can literally take on more jobs. You can take on so many more different roles, more different jobs. That's not necessarily to say that you will get more money as a result, far from it, but it just means that you are going to be putting on a a lot of different hats. Especially if you're a freelancer, you're going to be doing a lot of different jobs. In the past couple of months alone, um, I've done some documents, I've done some user interface uh, work, I've done logos. So being a generalist, you are going to do quite a lot of different jobs. And the other thing or the other pro when it comes to being a generalist is that you have a sort of holistic an interconnected view of of things of of work for example let's say you are the creative director in an agency if you have an idea of what copywriting is like if you have an idea of what typography is like if you have an idea of what photography is like then you'll be better suited to have a conversation with the people that are in your studio about how best certain things can be handled. Now, it's not to say that you can't necessarily be a single sighted creative director, far from it, but then you have a far more interconnected view and a far more holistic view and approach to things if you understand where people are coming from when it comes to some of these things and some of these roles, especially in agencies. As a freelancer, it's easier for you to talk to people that you're going to subcontract because you have a basic, be it rudimentary understanding of what it is exactly that you are trying to achieve. 
For example, um, I will be speaking to someone who does animation and I have a rudimentary understanding of animation. Of course, I won't go to the specifics, but then that's literally what rudimentary means. And so that's something that definitely has helped me in my career, being able to touch on different um, aspects of creative work, be it copywriting, be it just general typography, be it photography, be it animation, motion graphics, all that jazz. I'm saying all that jazz a lot these days. Hmm, must be in the 90s in me. Anyway, so above and beyond that, we've got the ability to be flexible in terms of your career. Being a generalist opens up the, um, the possibility of you going into so many different fields in the sense that this is not a repetition of the first point. This is just um, a completely different point. However, it does sound it's very similar in the sense that if you are, for example, a graphic designer, you start out as a graphic designer, you've got the foundation to be able to go to become someone who perhaps is a motion graphics designer. I have a friend who, have, who went through that particular career path. You can become an industrial designer. I know someone who's um, gone through that path. And if you want some famous ex examples, you can look up a lady by the name of Yo Santosa um, with Ferro Concrete. She's basically she's someone who started out in a graphic design, became a motion designer, came back to graphic design, and then went back to motion design as well. Your career path is not necessarily going to be linear. Things don't necessarily always work out the moment you want them to work out. And I'll quote again, I'm pretty sure I've quoted this before. Things don't always co connect the moment you press play. Thank you very much, they call. And that's something, that's something that we also have to consider. If you're going to be a generalist, you will have the opportunity to pivot from where you are. I was having a conversation with one of my older brothers in design and he was telling me that you can pivot, you can change careers. It's not like you're tied down to this particular career path because you have so many facets to you as a creative. You can just become whoever you want to be. You can even become a specialist if you want to later on in your career. If you don't want to, you can always come back to this. It's, it opens up a whole lot that you can do with your creative journey and I'm all about the creative journey. Anyway, going on to the cons. Um, losing depth for breath. By what, what I mean by that is the sense that you will have knowledge about a lot of things, but not necessarily in-depth knowledge about a lot of things. What will eventually happen is that you will get to a point where your knowledge basically runs out because you haven't gone to the depths of that particular subject. Let's say, for example, like I mentioned before, I have a rudimentary, rudimentary knowledge of animation. If someone asked me to do an animation project, I would start it, but I wouldn't, probably wouldn't be able to finish it, at least in the same time frame that someone who is a specialist in, graphic, in motion or animation would be able to finish it. I would stumble quite a fair bit because I have that rudimentary knowledge. And so that is a potential problem that you have to, that you will face as someone who is a generalist. However, there is a way to remedy this. Just learn more. It's pretty much that simple. And then the other con, this is a bit morbid, but it is definitely a con. Um, people will consider you a bit more easier to replace because there are a lot of generalists. There are a lot of people that have surface level uh, information, surface level learning. And so as a result, they may not necessarily feel the pinch, so to speak, if they were to replace you. Now, that's not, that's not me saying that. So being a general, generalist means that a company doesn't need you as much as a specialist. Far from it. But different companies have different setups. And so as a result, they will always weigh you differently. It just depends with the company setup and you being a freelancer when it comes to being easy to replace. Can this client get what um, they're getting from you from someone else for the same amount of 
be it money, with the least amount of inconvenience. Because at the end of the day, let's be honest, we go for inconvenience more than anything else. People pay for convenience and they try to avoid inconvenience. So if you can provide that unique selling point, whatever it may be, maybe it's one of the things, maybe it's your communication. Maybe you communicate particularly well. Maybe you articulate your points and your arguments particularly well. That is something that is a unique selling point that could easily make a client stick with you over someone who may potentially be either an all cheaper alternative or someone who they may consider somewhat more convenient in some way. Anyway, going on to the last of the cons, at least in my list, <laughs> being having loosely defined roles. Uh, the, fa- the fact that you wear so many hats, you essentially could become a jack of all trades. You can become someone who does a lot and so as a result we can't really put you in a box Uh, some organizations want specific boxes especially the larger organizations they want specific boxes that can be filled by specific people so if you are a generalist for example it's really difficult to define what it exactly it is that you do um, because you do so much now that's easily something that can um, bite you especially when it comes to earning in the sense that when you're starting off you essentially are going to be put in the box that they think you fit in but then when you get into the organization you maybe start doing other things that were above and beyond your job description speaking from experience i've done this before and it's it's not always something that um you can mitigate in terms of perhaps negotiating out of the contract or not necessarily out of the contract but negotiating more from the contract it's something that i would definitely like to have learned earlier (laughs) it would have saved me quite a bit of grief but we live and we learn and yeah that's definitely a con when it comes to being a generalist now going on to the aspect of being a specialist we're done with the generalist now um the first and has to be the biggest pro is that you are swimming in a smaller pond there are fewer specialists that's why they're specialists because it takes longer for you to learn certain skills that are going to make you a specialist i i always hear people saying that it takes ten thousand hours to become an expert i don't subscribe to that Um, necessarily because you can have those 10,000 hours and still not be an expert. You can have those 10,000 hours and nothing really registered as much as it probably should have, you know? Um, But anyway, that's, I digress. Having to be in a smaller pond means that you have more opportunities in your um, field. If you're a specialist, you get um, more jobs that are tailor-made to what you do so it's easier to actually get a job be it as a freelancer be it as someone who's in a company yeah and then this one's gonna sound like repetition but again it's not it's easier to be a big fish in a small pond so if you were to put for example a car in a swimming pool it's gonna look huge But if you were, by the same token, going to throw a rock into a pool, it's just going to make a small splash. It's not really going to be, it's not, it's going to be barely noticeable depending on the size of the rock. Let's say that a rock the size of your fist, of course, you'll see the splash, but it's not going to be anywhere near the size of a car or the size of a boulder, for example. So it's easier for you to be, actually, let me give a better example of that. If you put a shock in the average in the average swimming pool, it's going to take up a lot more space than if you were to put your average sized salmon or mackerel. Basically, it's, it's, it's that principle. And it's going to be easier to notice the big shark that's in the pool than it is to notice that salmon in there. So that is basically as good as an, an, an explanation or an example as I can possibly give in that when it comes to that point. As a specialist, you will stand out more when people are looking for your specific skill sets. If you are an, um, someone who does document design or editorial design to be specific, 
people are going to look at you and your portfolio and they will be more interested in your services than if you were a generalist because they can see that this is what you specialize in they can see your track record and so as a result even when it comes to commanding fees you can command a lot more if you specialize in that particular field yet again i'm not trying to say that there's one that is better than another each to their own and you have to choose which one works best for you and then the last point when it comes to the pros of being a specialist is it's easy it's easier for clients to trust you if you go to i use i'm going to use the health the health um sector a lot in this particular episode in that it's easier for clients to trust you if you have if you have chest pains for example and you go to a cardiovascular surgeon you will trust what they say about how you're feeling over what the general physician said because this is their field this is their specific problem now if you for example went to a general physician and you said that you're having shoulder pains for example you're having um what feels like a tense shoulder and then they give you a, a diagnosis that is general and then it solves the problem then everybody's happy but if the generalist if the general physician gives you uh, a diagnosis and then uh, prescribes certain medicines for you and they don't work you are going to more likely going, going to go to a, gen, a, spe, a specialist next time specifically because the generalist in as much as they gave you something that was um supposed to heal you supposed to make you feel better the fact that it didn't will make you go to someone who's a bit more of a specialist more yeah anyway now going on to the cons you are sought after as a specialist for a very specific thing so by the same token the fact that you're sought after for a specific thing means that you are also going to be looking for specific clients you can only fit in a specific box meaning that the majority of jobs that may that may be in the industry don't necessarily fit you directly you will be looking for jobs that have a very narrow or not very narrow but just a narrow job description because you have a specific set of skills in comparison to a broad set of skills it goes back now to um the con for the generalist which is losing depth over breadth this is the exact opposite you're losing breadth for depth you now have a deep understanding of your field let's say it's um something like logo design you've got a very deep understanding of logo design and brand identity design visual identity you can do the brand strategy you can um do the brand manuals you can manage a brand properly especially when it comes to how it how it comes across visually but what if for example there is a job that needs you to do that the brand identity jobs but it also requires for you to do editorial design and you can't do editorial design however there's a generalist who can do brand identity to a degree and they can also do editorial design to a degree granted that the generalist is going to have a lot more people that he's competing with because more people have surface surface level knowledge that does not necessarily mean that they'll still go for the person who's the specialist over the person who's the generalist now companies are different like i said clients are different they will that's the reason why it's okay for you to either be a generalist or a specialist because there's enough of the market for everybody to go around anyway the other con when it comes to being a specialist is a bit of career inflexibility if you have been learning deeply about something and you become an expert on something to the exclusion of everything else if let's say for example that particular field gets taken over by oh i don't know artificial intelligence it's going to be difficult for you to pivot onto another onto another um career because you have been so deep in something for so long that's i'm not saying it's impossible far from it but it's 
harder for someone who has been a specialist to pivot back into something or to pivot in general into something that they've never done before in comparison to someone who's just been touching lightly on certain topics. That is that is probably the biggest con of being a specialist in my opinion. But yeah, um, that's basically what the pros and cons of being a generalist are, at least my research if you'd like to read more uh, just, uh, i'll leave the link in the description and take a look at innovationmanagement.se they've got some real gems when it comes to being a generalist or or being a specialist now this is a topic that is specific to to creators to designers mostly however i believe it's something that can be apply, applied across the board it's something that you can just apply even in life <laughs> really there I go with my life coach um, shtick again. Anyway, um, some of the things that you should consider when it comes to choosing whether you should be a generalist or a specialist is the market size. If you're going to be a graphic designer, how many other people are graphic designers in the world? You have to think about that. You have to think about the profitability of that particular field. How many people are graphic designers and how many people are... Um, are motion graphic gurus and which is more profitable for me and then the other thing is the long-term prospects in the sense that when you're 50 years old will you still be able to be working in this particular in this particular market will you able to be teaching this particular subject and will it still matter then obviously we can't we can't predict the future obviously not but there are certain things, there are certain indicators, there are certain trends you have to look at. For example, in design, you have, just have to look at AI. Instead of fighting AI, I feel like we should be adopting it to, to, to make our lives easier as designers. Because being, as, being a designer is, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it can be daunting. But much like any career, it can be quite daunting. And you need things to make life easier for you. And I, I believe if we can adopt more of this technology to our own advantage, it's something that will help us in the long and short term. So that's something to consider as well. And then the intersection between your skills and your desires is something that is very important. Because I'll, I'll give you an example with um, myself. I already mentioned it in past episodes. That I really wanted to have a situation that I, where I create timeless designs, where many years, decades, hopefully centuries from now, they can look back on my work and say, "Okay, he was really good at what he did." See what my what my grandkids are going to be thinking about the work that I did and things like that, whether they like it or not, is you know, <laughs> it's a consequential at this point. But it's my contribution to the world. It's my contribution to. Um, to the artistic movement i know a lot of people say that um design graphic design specifically cannot be art because art cannot have a function outside of itself that is true but there is an there's a very interesting uh word that one of my mentors once said and he said functional art and that by itself is a bit of an oxymoron because like i said before art cannot be functional but we do make works of art every now and again, don't we, <laughs> as creators. And so if you, if you love making art and there is a demand for it um, and you're, you're good at it, you enjoy doing it and there's a demand for it, then by all means go for it. I have a friend of mine who's very good with his, with his pen. He draws the, the most beautiful portraits with his pen and every time i see the stuff that he creates i'm like dude how did you find this out like how did you discover that you're this good at this because he's he's incredible for for those of you that want to um look him look him up his name is doan graphics um i'll add his name in the in the description below J just ch check check it out and just let me know it's it's some really incredible work i promise he didn't pay me or anything to plug i'm just saying <laughs> um I'm just saying on this point, the intersection between your skills, your desires, and the demand for those sp specific skills that you have 
that is what is supposed to inform your decision whether you want to be a generalist or you be a specialist you don't have to be a generalist um, you don't have to touch on everything you can niche down and be on a specific um, a specific part of the market that will become um, something that you specialize in but you can also start out by learning the ropes in in everything I already mentioned before I started out in photography and then got into graphic design got into um, a bit of animation and motion and then got into um, user interface design and then branding so there's a whole lot of things that you can touch on you are not under any pressure to be a generalist you're not under any pressure to be a specialist the only pressure that you should be under is to be the best version of yourself as a creative and so on that nuggets <laughs> on that nuggets of odd wisdom rare wisdom wisdom nonetheless that's gonna be the end of this episode let me know let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments and it's always a pleasure hearing from you guys um i've been like i said overwhelmed by how many people have been coming up to me and just letting me know that um it's it's really something that's helping them this podcast and it really um just motivates me to keep going and um yeah i'll hear from you guys next time take care yeah